Well, this week, let's talk about where to hunt during the rut. We've talked about what time frames a person might be out there, but what place do you look for, Joe, to hunt during a rut? Well, I think that, uh, you know, pre-rut, when the, the bucks are out looking, I like uh, travel corridors if, uh, if there's a real heavy travel route. And again, I, I, I do a lot of whitetail hunting in open country. So those bucks are cruising and they're cruising up the river bottoms or out the fingers or, you know, they'll, they'll run coolies. You know, their travel routes are pretty important to them because they're searching for a doe. They're on their feet during daylight. They're covering more ground during daylight. And uh, I just like to hunt the travel routes. Actually, rut out west is pretty easy to hunt on whitetail deer compared to um, Minnesota and, and uh, Wisconsin, you know, where I live is actually a little bit little bit trickier in those states um, you know y y again I think that uh, you get a food plot or you get a food source where where a lot of deer are coming to you're not going to see the bucks out on that typically during daylight however they will travel the downwind side of it they'll they'll scent check it they come by there they do a lot of that kind of uh, movement during the, the pre-rod anyway I think there's two times of the year in my experience in talking to lots of hunters that they struggle with knowing how to and where to hunt. One is late September and through the early weeks of October when the acorns fall. And everybody's used to seeing all these deer for the summer and all of a sudden there's no deer in the food plots and people don't know how to hunt. The second is the rut. And both require you change where your tree stand is. Change, you have to change your hunting technique or your, your, the way your procedure. It, they're very huntable. Like Joel says, I agree 100% everything he said. And this idea, though, of just being able to go to one tree stand all year long and hunt through all these, that does not work. When rut comes, you've got to, if, and it depends where you're hunting. As Joel said, when he's in open ground, you can see, so you can make, you, can, you have your visual, visual clue, and then you can go and do what you need to do to try hunt, whether it's stalk or set up on a travel quarter or whatever it is. When you're in heavier brush, like we have down here in southern Iowa, or in Minnesota, Illinois, wherever it might be, there you've got to either tra hit pinch points, you've got to set up bedding areas and go on the edge of the thick stuff where the deer are bedding, or between bedding areas where the bucks are going to go back and forth, and just put your time in. Generally, I say, the thicker the better, as long as you can see around the chute and that you're in a travel area. But a lot of people struggle with this, and it's unfortunate because my goal, it's actually the mission statement, I, I want people's experience a field to be as good as possible and I want my products to enhance their experience and I want everything we do to just make people's time a field most enjoyable. Well, unfortunately, one of the most productive and active times in the season, people misinterpret it and they don't hunt it quite right. <coughs> And a lot of times they don't have the fun or enjoy it as much as they should. But there are ways to set up, depending where you are, that you can really hunt well during the rut. Mr. Food Plot, what do you think? Uh, I agree that you, know, you need to be mobile as much as you can. Again, if you have all year to hunt as opposed to a few days. Uh, you know, I like to hunt food plots at the first two or three days of the season before the deer, before the mature bucks wise up that we're, that, you know, that we're after also like hunt on or near the food plots during the rut. Uh, after that, typically I would move back anywhere from 50, 100, 200 yards off the food plots to hunt the travel corridors coming in. Sooner or later, the, during the rut, the bucks are going to cruise on the downwind side of those food plots, scent checking to see if any of them are in heat. Uh, very effective. You're going to see a lot of deer, but you've also got a chance to see a mature buck that way, in my opinion. First few days of the season on or near the food plot during the rut, and then after that, move back further in between the bedding areas and the food plot itself, in my opinion. And then one other real important thing, and Larry, you're one of the best I know at this. Pre-rut is when all of your techniques work. Your decoys, your rattling, your calling, all that works. When you hit the, the core of the rut or the heat of the rut lockdown, you can rattle your lips off, you can, you can rattle them, you can grunt your lips off, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> During the heat of the rut, you can grunt your lips off, you can rattle your horns to a nub, and it doesn't matter because they're not interested in that. They're with a doe. Kind of like trying to gobble a, a gobbler or call a gobbler off a hen. It just, it's hard to do. So, but the fun part of right going into the rut, and it determines where you're going to hunt, is you can rattle, you can call, you can 
do all the different things that bring deer to you and they're very aggressive then. A week or so later, you're gonna to have to set up on a travel corridor because they're not gonna to come to you. You gotta intercept them because they're doing what nature calls them to do. There, there's no doubt about it that the stimuli, if you wanna call it that, in hunting and getting something to happen for you is way more productive prior to the peak breeding and after. Now, the, the, I, I've rattled up deer in January before, but the, uh, the amounts of encounters you have because you manipulated the deer, whether it be with a grunt call, a decoy, or horns, whatever, drastically dwindles mm -hmm. after the peak of the rut. And, you know, a lot of those bucks are so worn out after the rut, they're interested in nothing but sleeping and eating. Yeah. And go totally nocturnal for the rest of the year a lot of times unless you've got bad weather to move. Yeah. Another thing we learned down here hunting with Mike a few years ago, the buck to doe ratio and the deer condition make a big difference, even in the rut. And whether they come to a decoy, whether they come to horns, whether they respond to this stuff, if the buck to doe ratio is really balanced well, they do, it's like they read the script. They do everything they're supposed to do. When you go to a farm where there's a whole bunch of does and the bucks are a little out of, out of balance, they don't work so well. So it all depends where you are, how this works, but there are ways to hunt a rut and be very effective, but you have to, you have to kind of read the cards or read the tea leaves of where you hunt. Um, one of the things is the adapt, the adaptive and everything was, so we talk about the rut like it's, like at this, like it's this you know, magical three or four day window and it, it lasts over weeks. We see fawns born from early May, late April, all the way into June, which means those deer are getting bred at lots of different times out there. Um, you know, earlier, like we've talked, you know, pinch points, travel corridors, things of that nature, I think in the early part of the rut are great. Later in the rut, um, you know, I sat on an open cornfield and a lot of guys are like, well, why would you do that late rut? And it's just to what you said, the deer are tired, they still wanna breed, they still have that drive. But as you get in the later part of the rut, more does are bred, the does are going back to a normal feeding pattern. So you're gonna get out in food plots and different things. You're gonna get all those does. The bucks are gonna come. I had four different mature bucks in the same field and all they were doing is going from doe group to doe group out there, still looking, still tired. They'd eat a little bit on the way. So, you know, being able to adapt, you know, where you might be hunting a, a pinch point earlier in the rut, later in the rut, you may wanna move that stand back out onto a food source and hunt the food source. 